harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl. Here he comes and all eyes are on him. <laughs> Billy, it's the busiest time of the year, so if you need a break from all the holiday action, Best Fiends is the perfect pick-me-up. It's seriously your new favorite game, what you're telling me. Best Fiends is a match three style puzzle and adventure game all rolled into one. And with more levels being added all the time, there's always something new to play. That's right, Tom. I'm really enjoying this You're game. You're loving it, aren't you? As you know, I'm not the greatest gamer in the world. Oh, William. But this is kind of simple. I know what I'm doing. You have these little fiends that help you out and they get bigger and better and stronger as you go on yeah. and you get to new levels. And I don't want to brag, Tom, but I just opened up a whole new level last night. Oh, congrats. It's fantastic. And my fiends are doing good. I like the sound of that, Billy. I, I have yet to play it. But you have told me how much fun it is. So it might you be, should. It might be the next game that I really get into. And if you don't have Wi-Fi, if you're off doing something, it doesn't matter. You can still play. Fantastic. So download Best Fiends today for free on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. That was the match of the day. One of the greatest BBC One shows of all time, I would say. And for anyone listening who was a fan of uh, football, probably get quite excited hearing that. Yeah. Thinking, here we go, it's the match of the day. It kind of, for so many people out there that love football, it kind of is a tradition. It's on at 10.30 at night. Maybe you've just come back from the pub early. You've had your dinner. The night's getting long. And then they put on the, the week in football, which is basically a little greatest hits. As a Manchester United fan right now, it's not that much fun watching match today no. because we're struggling. But that song, oh, it just, as a kid, you, it reminds me of, you know, oh, dad, can I stay up late and watch match of the day? Yeah, you can stay up late. What about the, the song for the cricket? What would that be like, Dom? Oh, yes. Can you remember? Yeah, I think I can. Hold on. Eat a couple of nuts and have a real it's good think like about it. Oh, it's not quite. Din, din, din. It's like that, isn't it? Din, 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 din. No, you're back to match of the day. Well, this is fascinating podcast it? stuff. Anyway, we're in a giddy mood because this is the first time we've been back in the studio for, I think, four months. Back and forwards. Back and forwards. But I've been working away, so we've been struggling to get into the podcast studio. And you recently had a cold, which has kept you. Well, it has kept me in the house because, as we all know, you know, the world over, it's a strange time to have a cold. Yeah. Because um, I've I've been tested a few times for COVID, obviously. Yeah. And uh, everything's negative. Mm. But it's a worry, isn't it? And you certainly can't, in this day and age, go out, say, for instance, into the supermarket and sneeze. No, no, no. People be, will look at you as... Yeah, looked at as a pariah. Am I using that word? I always yeah. struggle with the word pariah. Does pariah, mean... piranha. Piranha. I always get mixed up. One's a scary fish. The other one's like someone who gets pushed to the outsides of society. For sneezing so or coughing. But so does scary fish, don't they? Like, yeah. They don't hang out with the other fish. They're all like, oh, away, away, away with your sharp teeth. As someone who knows about animals very well, mm. are piranhas that scary? Or is it all from that 80s movie? It's a little bit of a scaremongering tactic, that film. Because piranhas... Tiny little fish, similar to a perch. Right. You know, a perch oh, I like. enjoy a perch. Not that big. I would say smaller than a smaller than a uh, kind of side plate, not a dinner plate, like your little side plate that maybe you put your bread on type thing. Smaller than that. Like a small <laughs> pancake or a tortilla. That would be the size of a piranha, right? They hang out in large groups. So all of them together makes them much more scary. And what's what's famous about piranhas is how quickly they will strip yeah. the carcass of its flesh. 
But that carcass would need to be probably in harm's way. If you're but, swimming in the Amazon uh -huh. and you're totally fine yeah. and you're in piranha-infested waters, blah, yeah. blah, blah. You know, if you stood still yeah. and let them have a go at your leg, then, yeah, you'd probably be in trouble. But would a piranha approach a fully fit human swimming and all of them start to attack you? I don't think so. Has it happened? Maybe. But, you know, you'd have to be, maybe be bleeding so they'd come over. But it's a tight... I mean, on its own, a piranha that big. Yeah. yeah on its own, it. if it came over to you and it started getting aggressive, I'm sure if you kicked it in the face, it wouldn't come back for more. Because I I'd remember... Try it, actually. I remember a scene in that movie, that piranha movie, where someone was sitting on like a... You know, a, the dock a, of the bay? A, a, yeah, a little dock of the bay, yeah. doing nothing much. Yeah, and then, just watching the time. And then you just... And he went, oh, and it, it was a skeleton from there down. <laughs> I mean, would, that wouldn't happen, would no, it? No, no, it wouldn't happen. But they've taken like a dead goat or whatever and put that in the water. And as soon as, because it creates this feeding frenzy, as soon as the Ooh. feeding frenzy starts, mm -hmm. I would think within half an hour or so, that goat is a, is a skeleton, you know, because they do, they do, oh, I've got schmutz on my face. Don't you worry. To try and... Is it? I taught a lot of people at work that word detritus. It's a good word. Good, right? Little stuff, isn't it? Bits yeah, of Betsy, stuff. Yeah. I was mentioning it one day. I was because obviously you can't see your face um, without a mirror. <laughs> Strange thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I was at work and I was like, I think I've got stuff on yeah. my face. Yeah. And the makeup artist came over and said, What? What do you have? I said, I don't know. Just like detritus around here. She went, psoriasis. I went, No, not psoriasis. No. Detritus. Dermatitis. Dermatitis. And then I had to explain what I thought detritus was. And then from then on, any opportunity for us to try and say the word detritus during yeah. the day got like a little ding, ding, ding. You've said it. So good times on set. You know what I mean? Yeah. But wait, I was going to finish something about piranhas then. You put piranhas, in a goat. There was a goat being lowered then. Piranhas, the goat. Would you, if you and I were on a, or in a canoe on the Amazon. Yeah. And I said... Someone has to swim to the other side there to, you know, grab the grab the rope to dock the boat. Yeah, yeah. But just be careful, Billy, because there are piranhas around. Would you be like, well, I'm not jumping in the water if there's a piranha, or would you still do it? I would probably still do it. Good for you. But I, I wouldn't, I, I don't know if I'd enjoy it. Mm. Because it wouldn't just be the piranhas. It'd be everything. It'd be. Yeah, I've swam in the Amazon and it is unnerving because it's the colour of chocolate milk and you just think... I don't know what's done there. I'm more scared of the kandiroo. You know the kandiroo? Oh, is that the one that That's goes up little, your urine? Yeah, you up your urine. But your urethra. No, but I thought while you were peeing. Yeah, it does. It, it actually follows. got up your urine. Yeah, I stream. Thought, I thought you were mistaking the word urethra for urine. Urine. Urethra. Urethra Franklin, who sang One of the specs. great soul one singers. The, one of the really great singers. So, yeah, if you are urinating or, I guess... This is going to sound a little bit disgusting, but most animals will have a certain amount of urination uh, hinting going on in those areas, whether you're urinating or not. Do you know what I mean? Like th that fish, the kandaroo, doesn't need you to be peeing. No. It knows where you're peeing Oh, it from. knows? Does it know? Yeah, because it follows the scent. And it has barbs on either side of its, of its uh, face. And it swims, if it's a male, right. up the penis yeah and then uh -huh. shing, like wolverine uh -huh. opens up its little barbs and now you can't get out and i think you have to have a penisectomy what would you call lopping a knob off no they don't take it right off it's called a bobbit i don't think they take it off well what do what's the do? fish called candy i think they just go up and get the candy really you'd yeah. make a real mess of you the inside penis now You'd be peeing like a broken sprinkler for the rest of your life. For what reason? <laughs> what reason does a kandaroo go up there? It's a good question, and I should know that because I do like animals, and I caught a kandaroo in the Amazon. I caught what like, was he up to? <laughs> I caught three or four of them. Did you? Just Yeah, we, we, were, we were fishing, and we put like little bits of meat off the boat, and these kandaroo came up. And as a, it, so it creates this like mucusy slime, and as you pick it up, yeah. it creates this mucusy, like slimy ectoplasm stuff. But it also, it was trying to like bore into my hand. It was very scary. Like, oh, I had to drop it. So I don't know. I think it must, it either does one of two things. Yeah. Eats yeah. the penis. Yeah. But I don't think it does eat the penis. <laughs> no. 
I think. Late, no, it doesn't. Yeah, I think it late. But it's sex. a male, you said. No, I didn't say it was a male. I said it goes up the male. Oh, oh has, the female. Oh. It's not just male or female. It will also. What? Really? It will head into a twinkle cave if it gets an opportunity. So if anyone knows why the kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> the kangaroo swims up your penis and lays its eggs. Was it called the goo? Candiroo. Candiroo. If anyone knows why a candiroo would like to go up your pee pee, please write oh, to us. Oh, your twinkle cave. At um, the friendship onion at castmedia.com. Yes, please do. Should Talking do about people writing to us, should we, we have a look at some people who should have written it? to us? Come on, let's do it. I why did not? have a mouse at one point, but I've lost. Where's your mouse? It's gone. Now all you've got is like hammers and... and, and <laughs> yeah, I brought some tools. Yeah, it's good in, in case, case you one need of something us misbehaves done. And then you can <sighs> hike it. Um, right, hold on. Also, we don't have Johnny Clues with us this week. We're, we're no Johnny Clues? No Johnny Clues. We're premiering a new uh, friend producer with us this time. It's a new Johnny. Mackenzie Smith, who we're hoping to find an, a nickname for live in this show. Mackenzie Smith. Mackenzie Has she got Smith. a mic? Can Mackenzie say hello or not? No, no she right. can wave. Um, hey, Mackenzie. hey, Mackenzie! Can I just say, Mackenzie, you're so much prettier than John. But John isn't necessarily the prettiest man in the world, is he? Well, he's quite handsome. Is he? And he looked, I think he, he, he's he got that kind of disheveled, oh, I just woke up in a hedge yeah. sort of look. Yeah. He's you got, know. He, he's got that wonderful kind of, I might be hungover or this just might be my look. Like yeah, exactly. I might have spent three weeks, like, you know, drinking my own urine. <laughs> but, or I might just actually look like this. Well, we found out from Mackenzie that she doesn't like Mac. I had a friend called Mackenzie who did like Mac. She doesn't like Kenzie. No, she does like Kenzie. No, I don't think she does. No, she, uh -oh. you're not listening. One thing she does that. like Mac. Oh, is that right? No, she doesn't like Mac. She doesn't like Kenzie, but there's one that she does like. McKenzie. She likes McKenzie. McKenzie, okay. And her last name's Smith. McKenzie. Of course. Smith. We'll find something. We'll McKenzie find something. being Scottish, Tom. Oh, yeah. And meaning. meaning son of. Mac is son of. So it's Mackenzie, son of Kenzie. So Mackenzie would be son of Kenzie, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly what you're saying. So, but if, you, uh, if it's um, McMiller, uh, son of Miller. All right. Maybe the Miller of the town. All right. Mac, um, what about was there ever a McSon? McSon, son of son. son. Yeah. Oh, that's good, isn't yeah. it? Anyway, what we're we doing vo voicemails first. All right, let's do oh, it. Oh, first of all, I think Mackenzie would like us to mention, and I would like to mention, oh, Tom, quite soon, although not this week, no, not just no, yet. Not this week. No. There will be holiday merchandise oh. to be had, Tom. Holiday merch, you say? Oh, so outside yeah. of the normal merch, which is t shirts and hoodies and caps and. Stuff like that. What do you mean by holiday merch? It will have a holiday <coughs> slant to it. Oh, you're all right. Just a little tickle. Just something there. Go on. Now, I, I've seen some of it and I like it. There's little snow things and all that that oh. make it look like Christmassy. And I like, like it that. snowed on the Friendship Onion yeah. font. Nice. And I like that. And also, red and green, which is apparently uh, holiday colours, which I didn't know. In, uh, in the States, I think Is that is, only it? in the United States? I don't, I don't know. know. But like red for Santa and green for Christmas trees? I right? don't know, but red and green. There'll be red and green, but I've seen it. It looks great. Christmas socks. Socks. Oh, you can't have enough hoodies. socks. Oh, hoodies. I love a nice hoodie. So, yeah. So at some point, if, you, if you're looking around the merch uh, place, which is the thefriendshiponionpodcast.com, if you look there in the next couple of weeks or so, you'll see some Christmassy stuff that maybe you could buy for your favourite Christmas Eve friends. There will be socks. Now, let's do a voicemail or two. What, well, here they come. Oh, really? All right. Yeah, let's do it. Here we go. This is going to be a voicemail. And do you know who from, Tom? Someone in Perth. Australia. Australia. Here hey we guys, go. this is Simon here, and I just wanted to start off by saying you have touched me and my brother's lives so much over the past 20 years. Um, me and my family have watched Lord of the Rings at least twice a year, um, and I use the term twice very loosely. <laughs> so I just wanted to thank you guys so much for that. You guys are super amazing. Uh, but anyway, my question is, I know you guys love League of Legends, so do I. And I just wanted to know, do you guys play the champions Maokai 
or Ivern at all? Because I know you guys are such huge fans of uh, trees and ents and whatnot. And also, did you ever get Elijah to play a game of League with you guys? And if so, which champion did he play? Wow. Was that, that team, Dom? It's time for... League of Legends update! Almost had a hernia then. Dom. League of Legends. Well, there's a lot to be... There's uh, a lot to talk about, isn't ooh, there? Oh, there's a lot to unpack, Dom. Right, you go. You tell us your personal League of Legends story because you've really... You've almost turned pro at this point, haven't you? I've, yeah, I've entered the world of getting an S, which has changed my whole view. I couldn't believe when you told me that. Like, about a month ago, you were like, I've never had an S, and now it's like, S, S, Dom, S. I'd never had anything better than a C. Incredible. I was playing the wrong champions, I think. Yeah, you started out playing Kaiser, who's quite difficult. Quite difficult. And then I went on to Nami. And I, really? oh, I love now Nami. Now tell us about Nami. She is a mermaid. She's a mermaid of sorts. And her ultimate, for anyone who doesn't know, you get an ultimate, and that's the greatest thing that your character can do. And what Nami does is she sends out a tidal wave. <laughs> That all the bad guys, all the people in the other team, all get shot up in the air. Yeah. And then the rest of your team can go in and just destroy them. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just, I just sit back with Nami and I wait with that wave, mm -hmm. Tom. And I love it. That's the best I've ever seen you play. You play you've jumped around quite a bit, There's the same as everyone else. We, we've all jumped around. You played Lulu for a while. You played... Kaisa. There's a couple other characters that I'm forgetting that I you have play. played a few, but I, I try to stick with them because I, I think that I like them until I play another one and then I think, oh, that's much better. Which brings me on to this week. Please. When a friend of mine says, have you ever played Heimerdinger? One of my favorites. A, jo a joyful character. It's the most fun I've ever had. <laughs> I like him so much that I bought a skin. Brilliant. I bought a skin where he's an alien and his brain's on the outside. Oh, What's like that? the Mars Attacks? Yeah, like Mars right. Attacks. Right, brilliant. And his little guns are all like laser guns. Brilliant. And he is a fantastic character. You like space. You like Star Trek space. and space and sci-fi and stuff like that. Heimerdinger was also played by our mate Nigel. Yeah, I felt bad about that. Don't feel bad. I think sure? we, we all need to get over that because there's there's only about 150 champions and we'll all... Because we've all tried Lulu, haven't we? We've yep. all played different characters and stuff. But uh, Nigel started very early on playing Heimerdinger and one of the things that he that we always used to joke about was this, this thing that he created called Cannon Alley, which we talked about. Yeah. So we basically... Heimerdinger can put down... Tiny little cannons in like a triangular formation if he wants. Right? Yeah, yeah, whatever you want. And as you run through them, if you mess about with Heimerdinger, all of his cannons yeah. start getting you. Ah, oh, he's brilliant. He's in this new show, Arcane, which is on Netflix and follows the kind of origin story of sorts of a character that I love playing, Jinx, and a character that I don't play called Vi. Okay. And they're kind of sisters and it shows how they end up becoming almost kind of rivals and Echo, a character that you played quite a bit. Yes. Heimerdinger's in there. Heimerdinger's in it? Heimerdinger's in there. He's How, very is, funny. It? How is the show? Oh, the show's great. It's great. And where do we see it? The Flicks of Net. <gasps> Netflix? Yeah. yeah. Nine Why? episodes. They, they staggered them out. You can watch all of them now, but they, they, I think they brought out four and then they brought out another three and then they brought out the remaining uh, lot. Four plus three. Are they making more? Yeah, they're doing the second season. Wait, wait, don't rush me. Four plus three, seven. Yeah. So they brought out, and then they brought out the final two. There you go. I got there in the end. Um, brilliant animation style, very classy. You see the world of uh, League of Legends, which I think is called Runeterra. And yeah, and there is a kind of new technology that has been introduced to the world that a lot of people, Heimerdinger especially, He's very suspicious of. He thinks mm. that it can do bad things. Right. And then there's a kind of a de facto group that's saying, oh. no, no, this is great. This is something that we should do. Yeah. And then it kind of perverts the society in a way. Not sexually. No. Um, it's brilliant. I absolutely loved it. They're making a second one. I why, why are we not doing voices on that? I think probably we, we should for the second series. But my friend... Carrie, Nigel's wife, yeah. ended up watching Arcane without knowing that it had anything to do with League of Legends and was just like, this is a great show. Has anyone seen it? 
And I was like, that's, that's legal, legal that legend. You should be that's what your husband's only... playing every right. night that's when he should be when working. When he disappears into the cupboard yeah. under the stairs for like two hours to play with us, that's what he's doing. So it's great if you don't play League of Legends, but it's really good if you do play League of Legends as well. I'm going to watch it. The question from our lovely friend there, because yes. we, we digressed, was has have either one of us played Maokai? Maokai? Or Ivan? And I played Ivan quite comically, do you remember? Well, I never saw you play. You it. were in the game with us. Was I? Yeah. I was. It was you were a walking it, it, tree. Yeah, he is an end. It's the first time, really, that I was a jungler. And I was like, I don't want to kill characters in the oh, jungle. I'd yeah. rather be nice. And with Ivan, he doesn't kill jungle he creatures, he plants things, he protects them. Right. Puts like a little orb of protection over them. Um, but you guys were laughing at me because you never saw me in the game at all, did you? Like, Dom, where are you? We could maybe use the jungler's help. And I'm like, I'm in the jungle and just <laughs> walking around saying hello to my little forest friends. And then Maokai is the guy that he throws out little, little kind of mates. He's like almost kind of tree-like. And he's able to like throw out little kind of branches, little twigs of his that like run towards you. And then, I'm not, I don't know who that is. No. So we pl I played Ivan in the answer to our friend's question. I've never played either of those, but I would like to try that. I, I like being in the jungle. I like the jungle too. I just started playing Ziggs. Well, for a while I've been playing Ziggs and doing all right as Ziggs. And then back to playing Jinx because there's a new Jinx uh, Arcane skin that is really good. And I've been playing on my laptop, which is probably about 15 centimeters the screen. Yeah. But my monitor's like... I don't know, two feet. Yeah. So when I started playing on my monitor again after months of playing on the laptop, I was like, oh, it just feels like I'm two levels ahead of everyone because I can see stuff. And I got an S the first time I played. I was delighted with myself. You should get um, <coughs> you should Excuse get a projector. <coughs> oh gosh. You should get a projector and just put it on the the whole wall. Well, I spoke to a fr I spoke to Jake, our friend, yeah. about that. League of Legends. Right. The reason why people. The reason why you don't see people playing League of Legends on massive screens yeah. is the game is formatted to, to the maximum of a certain monitor right. size. Okay. And any bigger than that, all you're going to do is stretch. Oh, you're stretching the image, it. You're making, making it difficult. It. So you want it to be relatively small. So a very important uh, update uh, that our friend wanted to know there from Australia. Don't has... know if that was our Australian friend. Wasn't it? Don't know. He Who, sounded, do know he sounded Australian. Hold on. Oh. I don't have one of those. Oh, God. I think I left mine on the dining room table. Oh, did you? Well, I don't know who that was because we don't have it on the screen, but we... we Well, anyway, our friend who was asking about League of Legends yeah. there... Yeah, thanks, friend. ...did want to know about Elijah Wood and has he played ah. yet? Well, bad news on that. Really. <laughs> have you spoke to Elijah? Mm -hmm. Well, you and I have been speaking to Elijah quite a bit for a secret mm. reason. Yeah, don't tell We'll keep that him. secret. Yeah. But... Uh, unfortunately, both he and Sean Astin have been not only reluctant to play, but yeah. I, I've given up now. Well, have you given up? I'm not. No, I'm not giving up. Oh, good. Uh, I did get a message. I saw a message on Instagram or something where someone said that they had been speaking to Sean Astin at an event, and they asked him about League of Legends. And this person said, "I won't tell you what he said, but I would concentrate more on Elijah." Okay, so that means Sean Astin's out. It's, but I'm still not taking that as an out. Right. Well, I, I think Elijah's out as well because Elijah loves computer games. I know. We know that about I him. I know. He loves us. I know. He loves hanging out and chatting to us. <clears throat> I think he'd be good at the game. And I mean, I don't know. How many times have we directly asked him now? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to conservatively say that I have directly asked him to play the game Eight times, could we could we get it in the scale of a fruit? What Where, the what chance of Elijah of playing Elijah joining us? Well, we are doing, we are organising things with him that that might put us in a situation where we could put him under a, an incredible amount of physical pressure, intense emotional physical in the flesh. I mean, do you know what I mean? It's easy mm -hmm. to say ah maybe via a text, but if we actually physically see him. And, and say, you will, you will, you will do it. You play it. Put your hand on that mouse. Say it. Do it. Say it or I'll cut you. 
Oh. Something like that. I can turn into an East End gangster. Right, good. That, that play League of Legends. Right, I'll be Elijah, you be the gangster. Right, listen to me, son. What is it? We've been... Oh, wait a minute, where's Elijah from? Yeah, London? how come you're from <laughs> London? You're not, you're from, you're from, uh, where's he from? Idaho. Idaho. Yeah, yeah, you don't. You do an Idaho accent All right. instead. Hey, what the f- do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> now listen to me, son. Why is it? I've asked you, it's got to be at least the baker's dozen times, you will play League of Legends, all right? You're f- Taters. Taters. Wait a minute, I've went London again. Yeah, that's strange that you <laughs> keep doing that. Don't, don't do my voice a lot. I'll give you a Chelsea smile, son. If you don't play, at the very least, he did the tu- you did you done the tutorial. I know that. Has he t- though? He done the tutorial. Has he? He told me, told me. So he's done all the hard work. He's done the graft, and he won't jump in with his fucking mates. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I'll do you, sunshine. So next time we see him, I think you and I adopt. Maybe we come across as like the Cray Twins or something like that. We say, you yeah, play all right. it. Yeah, you play it. All right? Yeah, you better play it. All right, so I'll do you, son. He'll do you. So that's our League of Legends update. Yeah. I think in terms so, of yeah. Sean Astin, it's it's done and dusted. Hey, Dom. Yeah. Liquid IV. Ooh. You know that I love it. Mm. Oh, before I have a workout, when I get up in the morning, before I go to bed at night, I, I've got lots of times where I can find some time for Liquid IV. And now that the cooler weather's coming in, a lot of people make the mistake and think they don't need to drink as much, but that's dehydration, Tom. Mm-hmm. Make sure that you're drinking enough and Liquid IV helps you make sure that you're getting your water intake. You had told me recently that you prefer Liquid IV than any other drink, including water. What do you think of that, That's Dom? an incredible thing to say about this product. I love it too, and it has some fantastically yummy flavors. I'll tell you about a few of them Go here. Go on then. Lemon, lime, mm. strawberry, Watermelon, my favorite. Passion fruit, guava, pina colada, if you're feeling a little tropical, or immune support in tangerine. They're all super yummy. They're great, like you said, for after a workout or before a work- workout. Or let's say you've had a hard day. Maybe you've done a long haul flight. Maybe you've done a little bit of extra partying in the evening. Wake up in the morning, have a liquid IV. Tickety boo. Lovely stuff. And what makes it so effective, Dom? Cellular transport technology. It's got the optimal ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium. Delivers water and nutrients into your bloodstream. Amazing. So grab your favorite Liquid IV flavors nationwide at Walmart, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code ONION at checkout. That's 25% off everything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code ONION at liquidiv.com. Dom. William. We spend one third of our lives in bed. Wow. I probably do even more than that. Yeah, you're like a dormouse. So, pure organic cotton sheets from Ball and Branch make a really great gift for people. They make the highest quality sheets by doing things the right way. Not the easy way. Listen, I like a good sleep as much as the next person, but I like to sleep on very, very comfy sheets. I know that. And very, very luxurious pillows. Yes. That's my thing, you know me. The gift everyone wants is a better night's sleep. Ball and Branch never disappoint with the highest quality sheets, blankets, pillows, and throws. Plus, their holiday holiday packaging makes your gift look and feel that very much more special. That's true, actually. Mm-hmm. It comes in a fantastic box. Right. And I, I really like these sheets, Tom. The more you wash them, the more comfortable they get. Mm-hmm. They don't, like, get all horrible like some sheets. Pilly. Pilly. Oh, none of that. No pilliness. Great, great quality sheets from Ball and Branch. Mm. Buttery, soft, lightweight, and made with 100% organic cotton weave that feels incredible in all seasons. It comes in a wide range of colors and sizes from twin all the way up to an incredibly massive California King, completely toxic-free and fair trade certified. So treat yourself and your loved ones to the new standard in bedding from Ball and Branch. Their gifts come wrapped and ready in their special holiday packaging, ordered by the 19th of December for guaranteed delivery by Christmas. Best deals of the year going on now from the 6th of December till the 8th of December with promo code ONION at ballandbranch.com. That's B-O-L-L and branch.com. Promo code ONION. Exclusions may apply. All right, well, let's see. Have we got someone else? Let's do one more, Dom. Come on. 
It's nice hey to hear guys. from people. Oh, How hello. Are you? This is Naye. I am from Venezuela, but I oh. actually live in Chile right now. I wanted to mention something that I noticed in the Welcome to Billy Land episode mm -hmm. in the segment. Is it funky? You played a song by Five Alarm Funk, and I couldn't stop thinking about the fact that it reminded me of your song for the quiz segment. Something like, I'm going to wash your face. Do you know the answers to the questions that we'll ask? Do you know the answers? Ring -ding 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 -ding. Will you take the ring? Wow. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it, but I couldn't stop thinking about that. So let me know what do you think. <laughs> And I also had a question for both. If you could choose any banner artist in the world to write songs for each segment of your podcast, who would you choose and why? Thank you. Wow, that was that great was singing. Do we know what answers? The, the questions, questions that we we'll ask. Oh, I, I guess we won't be able to get a copyright of using that song, but it does fit perfectly, doesn't it? Doesn't it fit great? She's um, brilliant. From Venezuela, living in Chile. Can I just say, I think the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life were in Venezuela. Now, they were scary women, don't get me wrong. Yeah. They were terrifying women. Okay. But we got off the, uh, the when I was doing wild things, we went to Venezuela looking for the world's largest centipede, as you do. Yeah. Scolopendra gigantea. And in the airport, yeah. we were all kind of awed and flawed and wowed. But yeah, by just how beautiful the women were. We were like, wow, there's a really beautiful woman. Oh, there's another beautiful woman. There's another They were everywhere. And then we went outside <clears throat> to, our, to our hotel. Everyone in the hotel was, was beautiful. And then we did a a couple of days on the streets of, <clears throat> excuse me, I believe Caracas, which is where we, where we were, which I think is the capital city of, of Venezuela. Might be getting that wrong, but I think so. Some circus performers, when you're in traffic at a red light, people will come and juggle and do some unicycle stuff. And we were filming all that. And again, we were like, wow, every single, well, not every single woman, but more women than you would think were extremely beautiful. So congratulations to the country of Venezuela. Here's another fact you might not know about Caracas, Tom. Go on. Women outnumber men eight to one in Caracas. How do you know that? It's in the movie Gregory's Girl. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Now, that might have dated now, because when was Gregory's Girl? Early 80s. 1982. So the stat might have changed, but in 1982, it was probably true. There you go. Um, and the question from our lovely friend. Yes. If we could have anyone write our jingles and stuff like that, who would we pick? Is that who it was? What it Off was. the top of my head, other than us, because we'll write our own jingles, right? You write great jingles. You're, you're but great. if it wasn't us, and it will be us, <laughs> <laughs> but if it wasn't us, I would choose, um, and I'm just blanking on a second name right now, Neil from The Divine, Divine Comedy. Comedy. Yeah. I who I hear is writing the music for the new Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Is that right? Which I think will be brilliant. Neil Hannon. Neil Sorry. Hannon. Neil Hannon from The Divine Comedy. Yeah. And do you know what? You know I've been a fan of, of The Divine Comedy for years. Yeah, you played them a lot in New Zealand and it really reminds me of New Zealand. I love them. Mm. And one of their albums passed me by for some reason oh. called There Goes the Knighthood. Mm. And the last couple of weeks I've been playing it and it is fantastic. Fantastic, Tom. Oh, great. Please listen to it. Well, it, it sort of, it sort of reminds me of those great sort of British movies, you know, carry on movies or even before that. That's that sort of music. It's brilliant. It's it's life affirming. It's joyful. Oh, lovely. It's amazing. <clears throat> Please listen to it. The Divine Comedy and There Goes the Knighthood. I'll definitely listen to it because I'm on a little bit of a Scottish music tear right now because I've been listening to the BMX Bandits quite a bit and the other day I was telling you that I was listening to Frightened Rabbit. Ah, brilliant. Brilliant. Band. Yeah. And you wonderful. told me very sadly that the, the, the lead singer died was it yeah. last year? Uh, probably probably two or even three years ago now. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, lovely band. And, oh, lovely yeah, music. Wonderful stuff. Yeah. Uh, I would have Mr. Tim Minchin. Ah, oh, nice no Tim one. Minchin. Stand up comedian. Uh, fantastic piano player and I think did he write the music for Matilda the you are right the musical Doc. show and it's brilliant one of the best musicals I've seen in the last Fantastic. 10 years 
and he wrote all the music for it and it is wonderful. That's a good pick, Tom. He's jolly and one. joyful and, and full of whimsy and he would be great for the show. Yeah. All right, what that a great good. question. Yeah, good, good questions. Was that it? So we do, the, now these are questions. Uh, these are emails. Oh, <laughs> oh emails. Uh, this comes from our friend in Perth, Australia. Erin ah, yes. from Perth in Australia says, Hey, Dom and Billy. Oh, Billy and Dom, she says. Love the show. Thanks. I was sent an exception from my year 12 book from 19 years ago, which I thought you'd get a kick out of. What's an exception? I don't know. My question like to you that. is, who would you like to be stuck in an elevator with? And in year 12, oh, here we go. In year 12, 2002, my pick was Billy Boyd. Oh! Thanks for keeping me entertained on my drive to and from work from lovely Erin in Perth, Australia, which is one of the hottest places in the world, right? Is it? Yeah, Perth, very hot. Not the one in Scotland. No. It's freezing. But I would guess that the one in Australia was probably named after the city in Scotland, right? I would think so, a lot yeah. Of people a lot of, they all went over there, over didn't there. they? Um... Who would you be stuck in Who would you be stuck in a lift with? Hey, that's interesting, isn't it? I know my answer because it's always the same. Is it? Mm. Who is it? You'll like it. Go on. Siddhartha. Oh, yeah. The man who became the Buddha. Yeah. I think for my money, not that I have a lot of it, but for my money, he's he's the most fascinating human being. Like a dinner guest choice, Mm -hmm. Siddhartha. If you could ask any person one question, Siddhartha. So obviously, if I'm, if I'm in a lift with the man who became the Buddha, just to, just to pick his brain for a couple of hours. He, he, may, say anything. he, he may not. He'd just yeah. sit there, wouldn't he? Yeah. You'd, you'd be like, so, you know, so, what, what what's is, it all about? What should, yeah. No, nothing. No, no. You get nothing. Nothing. We'll just, we're all going to die eventually. Wow. And that was his, mm. one of his major teachings is you can't get away from suffering. Right. We will all eventually degrade and die, and right. you need to make your peace with it. Oh, God. Which is a tough one, isn't it? It's a long hour on the left, that, isn't it? Yeah, it is, actually. <laughs> Who's with yours? Who should be sent to Cindy Crawford? Well, well yeah. I, you made me think I, I better get spiritual, but... You don't why, have to, now. Well, how about, can I just, can I, uh, Peter Sellers? Oh, brilliant. And just see, I mean, I mean he'd do an hour, like, be really funny. Unless you got him in a maudlin mood. Because no. I think sometimes Peter Sellers <sighs> can be quite maudlin. Did you see him on um, Get Back? Oh! We've not even talked about Get Back. But he arrived in Get Back, didn't he? He did. With the Beatles. He was, he was doing the magic Chris, Christian with uh, Ringo, or about to. Yeah. He seemed to be a little out of place, didn't he? Was he was annoyed. He was like, I think Peter Sellers in that state was like, I'm one of the most famous people in the world. Yeah. Suddenly, I'm in a room with four people who are dramatically more famous than me. What do I do here? How and he, can I be funny? I think he was expecting, probably, to be, you know, lauded. welcomed in a lauded. little bit. Lauded. What would you like to drink, Peter? Oh, would Peter, you like a snack? Tell us some stories. Do some of your silly voices. Yeah. But, but instead, that's what Lenin was doing, wasn't he? He was just, yeah. Complica- a complicated character, Peter Sellers. I think all all people are complicated if you yeah. look at, if you look at them deep enough. I don't know about that. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> all right, read that one, Bill. Are you ready? This is Jerry from Portland, which is in Maine, Dom. Show me your hand. Where, if my hand, yeah. were the United States of America, yeah, New York, California, yeah, Mexico down here, yeah. Where would you find Portland, Maine? I'm going to say go up from your wedding finger, but yeah. on your index, like as if you were to put your wedding finger on your index finger. Right. Are you, oh, on yeah. Your indi- yeah, I think that's Maine. Right. That's Maine up there? Yeah. Okay. So Portland, north, south, east, or west, and Maine. I'm going to say the, the south. So I think, so you're saying about there? Yeah. Then? Now, I think I'm bang on, actually. I think that's not... I, do you know what? I've got absolutely no idea where Maine is. I've got a but, friend who has a place in Maine. It's supposed to be very quiet. I've seen pictures. Very, very beautiful. But I think you're right. I think it must be up round about here. Yeah. Now, but the only Portland I know... Oregon. So there's, there's more than one Portland. Yeah. Which brings me to this morning, before we answer this, there's more yeah. than one... I was just about to see your Please address. Please don't say my home address. But you sent me your home address this morning, didn't yes, you? Yes, but I included the postcode including, or zip code as they call it yeah, here. You did, Dom. 
And, and you said, to me, what did you say to me? I said, put in the zip code. And did you say, can you come and pick me up? Because ah, yes. I, I don't have my car at the moment. So let's go back. Let's Tarantino. Okay. I have recently bought a car which is in the shop. Yeah. And I said to Bills this morning, if you're on your way to the yeah. studio yeah. and you're passing by my house, do you yeah. want to pick me up? And you said, absolutely. absolutely. And I knew it wasn't on my way. But I, did, I didn't care about oh, that. Not on your way. Not, well, I've oh, not, you're you know what I mean? But I didn't bother me. I just said to myself, of course I'll pick you up, Dom. I'd love to have you in my car. And then I was in and I was brushing my teeth and I thought, I'll just get on my sin as address. So it's right there and then I just click it. Phones are good for that now. They are. Aren't I said, Dom, do us a favor, send me your address. Boof, I but, did it. <clears throat> I pressed it. I got in the car. It said an hour. I'm on the best day. I'm 30 minutes from you. Mm -hmm. So I thought to myself, this time of day, an extra 30 minutes of traffic. I can see that in Los Angeles. Okay, yeah. So off I went and I was on a phone call. And I was just on the phone call for sort of 20 minutes. And then I started, I went on to Audible and I was just listening to a book. Oh, a lovely audio book. And I was driving, I was driving. And I sent you the thing. You can do this on your phone now. Yeah. Send your ETA to whoever you want. So I sent it to you. I thought, I'm on my way. Dom will know when I arrive at his house. Out he'll come and off we'll go to do a podcast. I'm about 10 minutes from your house. You phoned me. Bills, what's your ETA? I That's said, I've, time I've, of arrival. I said, I've sent you, Dom. Yeah. I've sent you. I said, I don't know how to find that in my phone. I said, Is it in the maps department? You were like, I'm not too sure. I'm not sure. But I tell you what, I'm going to be there in eight. And just as I was saying, eight at 27, I said, I'll be there in seven minutes, Dom. I was very excited because I'd not seen you for a little bit. It got to about four minutes too. And I thought I should be recognizing Dom's neighborhood. Yeah. I it's called you. flags out. Dom lives here. Dom yeah. lives here. I called you up. I said, Dom, I think I've gone to the wrong address. No, you started, which, oh, is, which is terrifying. You oh, said, no. Dom, I've got some terrible news. <laughs> and I was standing up. I thought, I'm going to just have to sit down for Did this. you sit down? I'm going to say, I've, just, I've, had a, I've had a scan. It's not good. Oh, God. That's what I thought you were going to say. Did you really? Yeah. I've had some terrible news. I was like, go on. And I said, I don't think I'm at your address. And, I, and, and you said, where are you? And I said, I've no idea. <laughs> But you seemed slightly angry. You said, but where are you? <laughs> and I said, I've absolutely I no concerned. idea. I said, let me put in your zip code, yeah. your postcode, yeah. and then I'll know where I am. Right. And when I put that in, Dom, your thing popped up and I noticed where I was. And do you know where I was, Dom? Well, I was almost at Disneyland. Disneyland. You should have just gone. You should have said, let's cancel the uh, podcast for the day. I'm off to Disneyland on my own. <laughs> and neither of life. us live near Disneyland. No, no. And you were, you were feeling. Ooh, I, was, <gasps> I was apoplectic. Is that the right? Yeah, you I'm said, sure. you said, I'll get an Uber. Yeah. You just get yourself to the studio. Well, I was starving. Where so I was hoping that you would, because we, you had planned to get here a little early. Yeah, that's right. And I thought maybe on the way to the podcast studio, we could drop off for 15 minutes, maybe pick up some ramen, something right. like that. I always love some ramen today. I've not had it. But instead, I just, I, just, I, got, I, I said to you, I thought it was very mature. I said, yeah. Billy. Yep. You get yourself to the studio. Get Don't worry studio, about anything else. Don't I'll worry about me. I'll get myself to the studio. We'll just consider it something that's, we'll put it behind us. We'll never talk about it again. Never. And Dom, it was another hour drive for me. I thought you were going to show up sweating, but you actually showed up very calm. Because instead of a 30 minute drive to get here, it took me two hours and I went via Disneyland. Well, I, because we've been friends for a long time now, I, you, you do two very distinctive tells mm. when you're under stress. Mm -hmm. I do two. Mm -hmm. One, mm -hmm. sometimes you perspire. Oh, yeah. I sweat like a, a racehorse. You weren't sweating when you showed up. You no, very I took calm. It, yeah. Also, sometimes you'll mm -hmm. show stress levels on mm -hmm. your skin. What? Oh, yeah. Right? I'll get your red. Your skin will sometimes get a little bit red. Yeah, yeah. You know that's true. Did I'll, you I'll, get that? Yeah, yeah. I'll get like a little uh, blushy. Hey, Dom. Yeah. It's holiday season. Eddie, if you don't know what to get someone as a gift or a stocking stuffer, well, today's sponsor, Manscaped, has the tools to guarantee you win this year's stocking stuffer or white elephant competition. Manscaped is the leader in men's below-the-waist grooming. 
and they have served out more than four million men worldwide. And if my math is correct, that's eight million balls. <laughs> Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code ONION. Manscaped's best-selling product is the Performance Package 4.0, which is at the top of every man's wish list this year. So I hear. Tell them what's inside him, Billy. Inside it, you'll find a lawnmower body trimmer that's the best trimmer on the market for all your downstairs stuff. And the weed whacker, which is good for your ear and your nose. Mm -hmm. Get the performance package now to receive their two free gifts. The Manscaped boxer shorts Ooh. and the shed travel bag. The dads can't stop talking about it. The teens secretly buy this and the women will love you for it. Now, these are our picks for Manscaped Surefire Wind Stocking Stuffers. Number one, the Manscaped 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner just launched. Kill two birds with one stone. Mm. Number two, the Manscaped Cologne Infused Body Wash. Number three, Shears 2.0 Luxury 4-Piece Nail Kit. Number four, Crop Mops Balls Wipes for your stanky ball. <laughs> and number five, Manscaped Signature Cologne. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with code Onion, be the ballsiest gift giver this year with Manscaped. Finding the time or motivation to fit in a workout during the busy holiday season can be tough, but with Peloton, you'll get a fitness experience that's so entertaining and fun, you'll always be looking forward to your next session. With its authentic instructors and unique immersive content, the Peloton experience is unmatched. Yeah, I've got the Bike Plus, Tom, mm. and I think it's fantastic. Mm. I love the bike. It feels great. It's good to be on there. Mm -hmm. But their app is fantastic as well. You always find a workout that you want, no matter how long, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, mm. the kind of music that you want. Mm. They've got great little things like if you hear a song in a workout that you like, you can press it. It goes straight to your Apple Music oh, list. It's got great stuff, Tom. Yeah, I know since you started using the Peloton bike, not only have you been telling me how much you've enjoyed it, but you look fantastic. And it's good for my dodgy knee. Yeah, and your bum, which you're building up, you try to get one of them big Jennifer Lopez bums. Anyway, Peloton makes fitness entertaining and fun. Working out never feels like a chore, and there's always something new to discover. Peloton instructors curate playlists, as you said, to mm -hmm. motivate your every mood. From hip-hop, to country, to rock and pop, and everything in between. Yep, get your favorite classes wherever you go in the holiday season. Visit onepeloton.com to learn more. Try Peloton classes free for the rest of the year. That's new members only. Visit onepeloton.com forward slash app to learn more. Terms apply. Peloton, when your workout is a joy, it's a joy to work out. And a nut when you eat sugar, your arsehole gets itchy. It does, yeah. Very, very itchy. If I eat too much sugar and I'm at home and there's no one around, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll try and create a buffer zone around the, uh, sh the, sh the sugary bum hole. How do you do that? Just with a finger. <laughs> <laughs> Yours? Yeah, usually mine. It depends if I'm feeling lucky. If it's a Friday night, maybe someone else's, but not really mine. <coughs> Sorry what, about that. What I found... Uh, relieves that mm. it's a lovely glass of apple cider vinegar. Oh, yeah, that will thing. That would take the sugar down. So sugary body, make it sour. Yeah. Or drink something sour. Neutralize the anus. Mm -hmm. And then you can watch a movie without going... Oh, oh I wish I uh, hadn't had that last sour patch, kid. Yeah. Nah. Anyway, anyway, we digressed. Jerry from Portland, Maine, not Portland, Oregon... Portland, Maine, which we've decided is up here. Yeah. Jerry says, hello, Billy and Tom. I love the show and all the talk about music. You once debated the Beatles versus the Rolling Stones. No contest. But I was also wondering your thoughts on two other classic uh, British rock, Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. Are you fans? Where do you rate them on the Brahms versus Prince scale? Would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you. You didn't say thank you. Read it again. Thanks. Never misquote someone. <laughs> um, oh, wait a minute. Thanks! <laughs> exclamation It's got an exclamation point. mark. Thanks! Thanks! <laughs> or was that capitals I just did? Uh, thanks? No, that's a question mark. Yeah. No, that would be thanks. Thanks? Yeah. How would you do a semicolon? 
Where's, is there a semicolon? On? No, oh, but imagine it was. Is that a colon where it says British rock? Is that a colon? That's a colon. A semicolon is a little uh, dash and a dot. A, comma and a... A dot and then a comma at the bottom. What? Why would you choose a semicolon instead of a colon? Do you know? I if don't. If anyone would know that, please send your answers to the Friendship Onion at castmediawithakey.com. Does Mackenzie know? Mackenzie's not got a mic. Just wondering. Mackenzie, the- find a mic. Come on, we need to hear you. Here we go. Mackenzie. We're just wondering if Mackenzie has great understanding of, what would that be? It's not vocabulary, is it? I would say it? that is just the English language the English and uh, grammar. Grammar. Oh, yeah. yep. Here we go. go Mackenzie, on, Mackenzie, when would you use a full colon or a colon or a semicolon? So I believe a colon is when you want to list things and a semicolon is when you're putting two different sentences together. Wow. That might be a new nickname. We might have to call him Mackenzie Colon. Oh, so Mackenzie Colon said that you use a colon when you're listing something such as Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. So it's used correctly then. You have a colon. And you use a semicolon when you are comparing two things. Is that right, Mackenzie? I'm sorry, Mackenzie. I've misquoted her. When you link two sentences together. Ah, now, so could you give us a, 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 a what do you call it? An example. Yes. An example of when you would use, because we've got an example of a colon. Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. Do we have an example of a semicolon? Um, I walked down the street today, semicolon, I found a toad. <gasps> okay. So, mm-hmm. I walked down the street today, semicolon, semicolon. I found a toad. Okay. Those two things are kind of in some way linked together. But not with a comma. Yeah, why not, not a, a comma? comma? Why not a comma? Maybe? Because both sentences can be independent clauses on their own. <gasps> because both sentences can be a sentence on their own. I think we found a nickname. I think she's Mackenzie Colon. Right? <laughs> Mackenzie Colon? Mackenzie Colon. Mackenzie Grammar? <laughs> Mackenzie Grammar. We're getting there. Mackenzie Grammar's a nice name, actually. Yeah, that is good, actually. Is it too close to Kelsey Grammar? It's probably his daughter's name. Mm. Mackenzie Grammar. Anyway, the question. Uh, oh, let, yeah. Where do you stand on Led Zeppelin versus Black Sabbath? I think on Black Sabbath's windpipe. I'm not the, be- I'm not the biggest Black Sabbath fan. Is that Ozzy's band? Mm-hmm. I mean, Ozzy Osbourne's amazing. Legend. What a character. I, I probably like... I mean, this is going to be terrible for Black Sabbath fans. I probably like five or six Black Sabbath songs. What would you say is the big famous one? Ah, War Pigs. Sing it. Oh, I wish I could remember it. Generals. That's it. Generals, I'll do now myself. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know it. Like the I'm happy. Ozzy. Here we go. Here we go. It's, it's an eight-minute song. Wow. But this is class. This is class. No question. I love this Great song. Great guitarist. The guitarist. Great. Cr- is that a flash? Was in a, an, a, he was in an accident and he, and and he lost a couple of fingers. Ah! And he tuned the guitar down, so his guitar is tuned differently. Because his fingers couldn't hold the strings like right. they used to. That, that's what creates the and that's Sabbath what creates sound. And that's that Sabbath sound. Great drummer. Forget the drummer's name, but he's amazing. In fact, Sabbaths were good, man. I oh, forgot look, how good they no were. There's no question they're good. It just doesn't... We could probably turn off... Wait, 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 no, no. You've oh, got to get to this bit now. <laughs> we went through all the well, intro. Should we click forward a little bit? No, no. Here we go. Here we go, Dom. Damn. Come on, Ozzy. Ozzy, come on, Ozzy, Ozzy, come on, Ozzy. Generals gathered in their masses. Loud black winners and black masses. Oh, yeah, it's a jam. No idea what this line is, but. Don't it sound a dead in my zest? Justin. Oh, yaddy. Yeah. Oh, Why the more machine keeps turning? Oh, yeah. Too 
Oh, Listen up, drummer. Yeah, good, good stuff. I've heard that. I think that. I think that's featured a lot in uh, hip hop licks. Oh, is it? Grab that little that bit. That little bit. When people are rapping. Brilliant. Now, the thing is. I'm sweating. Yeah. Are you nervous about something? I don't know. It's not, it's not tax season, is it? No. Thank God. Uh, the thing about these great bands. Yeah. Zeppelin and Sabbath and the Stones and the Beers and stuff. Even if you're not a fan, you can get embarrassed by someone saying, what, you're not a fan of Sabbath? What about Warpigs? And you go, yeah, yeah, that's a jam. And they go, all right, well, what about this? What about... Didn't he also sing Changes? I'm going through changes. That's Ozzy, right? So he's done some amazing I mean, some stuff. Are, I mean, Sabbath were brilliant, but he's a rock if legend. you put them against Zeppelin, I mean, there's not, not really, not really a... a contest for me. For me, it's the same kind of contest as, as I would. <laughs> oh, see, there's oh, Zeppelin. Oh, Stairway. Brilliant. You I think for me, it's it. the way to, it's, it's the same kind of thing as having the conversation about Stones and the Beatles. You can make great arguments for the Stones, but really the Beatles just floor them. And for me, Zeppelin is the greatest heavy rock band of all time. I'm with you on that, Dom. And their look, their design, they're all so skinny and androgynous and the, the thin scarves and the hair and, oh, the whole look is incredible. And even though Sabbath's drummer was incredible, I mean, Jimmy, is it Jimmy Page or Robert Plant? He's, he's Page, the guitarist. Right? Robert Plant's the singer. Singer. Page is the guitarist. Guitarist. And then the, the drummer is John Bonham. John Bonham. Probably the greatest drummer that ever lived. Really? What about uh, Keith Moon? <laughs> Keith Moon? No. Keith Not, Moon from The Who? No, no, no nowhere near. Really? Bonham. Beats I've him. met some great drummers and they all put Bonham up there. What's the band that had the drummer with no arms? No, one arm. <laughs> Def Leppard, he lost it in a, a accident. Are you sure it wasn't no arms? No, he'd won. Crashed his car, yeah, an accident, yeah. Crashed his car, yeah. lost his arm. Lost his arm, <laughs> thought that's going to be the end of well, it. I think so, because you're 50% worse. 25. No. Like, they use the oh, nice, up. nice. But the bands stayed with them, brilliant. Didn't Sammy Davis Jr. lose his eye in a car accident? Yeah, the Chrysler uh, sign had a, a, a thing in, 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 in the steering wheel, a little sort of like a tiny point Eiffel Tower. Yeah, and I think he lost his eye because of that. I think from the story I heard, he had a lady or two with him, friends, just yeah, pals, friend, yeah. and uh, had to do like an emergency stop because there was an accident in front of him type thing. And he went, bang! And his, he, he poked himself in the eye and his eye came out. Popped it. Actually right out? Yeah. Can you imagine that strange feeling of like feeling it and being like, no, nah, it's not in there anymore. Maybe it was hanging off the side of his head. And what could he see out of it then? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Like he got pulled over by the cops on the way to the hospital and they were like, give us your license and registration. And he didn't want to turn his neck. He could just go... <laughs> Give me a minute, officer. I don't think... I'm just going to get it out of the glove box. Hang on, I'll keep my eye on you. Anyway. Terrible. Zeppelin or Sabbath? They're, they're both Zeppelin. brilliant, but Zeppelin, I would say Zeppelin are, you know, there's, there's 40 Led Zeppelin songs that I absolutely love, and there's probably five Sabbath songs that I love. Communication breakdown! It's well, always was the same! I mean, that break. I remember I, my brother playing me that when I was a kid. Because my brother got into Zeppelin once he started playing the guitar. And he played me that little bit in communi communication breakdown. And he was like, is this like one of the greatest sounds you've ever heard in music? Just where, amazing. Where the, Jimmy amazing, Page man. is the singer. Jimmy Page is the guitarist. Yeah, Robert Plant goes. Drive you insane. Shh. Yeah. That's just... What's and, your favorite Zeppelin and they song? And they reformed... And played one gig, didn't they, Dom? Is that right? I did not know that. They reformed and they played one concert at the O2 Arena in London. I was there, Dom. Were you really? I was there. Wow. It was amazing. When? And it, it was about 
Ooh, I would say about seven or eight years ago. You lucky beggar. I know. I was I was sitting there. Uh, no Gallico was there. Mm. They were all there, Dom. I bet they were. It was and, who's who? Well, no, it was Led Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> and they were fantastic. Much, much better than I thought they were going to be. Wow. I thought it was going to be a sort of nostalgic. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. They rocked, man. They sounded amazing. Imagine the amount of guitars that weren't getting played that night. I know. Everybody the was there. Of luminary guitarists there. They were Bono all there. there. I'm sure he was there. I bet he was. I bet he was wearing sunglasses. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite Zeppelin song? That's a good question. They did some uh, Lord of the Rings based songs as well, didn't they? The, uh, yeah, the uh, thing, the, um, the Black Riders, is that what it's called? Yeah, the Flight of Mo something of Mordor. The, uh... They talk about Mordor a lot. A woman, a woman from Mordor, and they talk about the nine Black Gollum, Riders. and I was in the land of Mordor. What's that? All that uh, rambling now, rambling. Ram And were they the band? Are they more attributed than any other band as saying we need Persian carpets? Are they are they that band? They said when we do a gig, it's Persian carpets. On the <laughs> I, floor. Don't, I don't know if I they think said that, that was Zeppelin they? more than anyone else. I know that they had they were the biggest band in the world for a little bit, and they used to travel in private jet, the Zeppelin jet, and all that. Some great some huge. great biographies about them as well. Oh, they were amazing. And a lot of uh, did they partying? Let's say. Oh yeah, we'll leave it at that. All right, great question. Well, that was fantastic, Dom. Hey, do you know what we haven't done this week? And I would love to do it because I know you're hungry. Starving. I'm Hank Marvin. I Not know you. Literally. Ya. It's a phrase. But hey, Dom, we've got an exciting one this week for Billy and Dom. Eat the world. Let's do it. As a kid, you remind, it reminds me of. Here we are, and we are eating the world. And just so you guys know, so it doesn't throw you off if you are watching Billy and I, we have moved to a different position to try something else out this week. We think maybe it would be more um, advantageous to eat at an actual table. Rather than on our uh, um, laps. Laps. Like animals. Or dogs. We, uh, we have moved to this table here. So, um... You'll see Mr. Dom Monaghan here on my left. Hello. And what are you eating today, Dom? Yes, today, William, we are eating something which I've never heard of before. Oh. And I love it when we try new things. This is black mint paste from Peru. And I believe, is it called hukatai? Is that the name of it? Hukatai. Hukatai, which In I think is Peruvian. Pasta. What? For pasta. Oh, for pasta. Why have we got it well, with we've potatoes got it with then? Pat patatas, patatas. So do people like it with potatoes? I what? think so. Honestly, I've never heard of this in my life. I'm very confused that it's a black mint paste, but they use it for pasta. Mint in pasta. So it's made from black mint. Yeah, a give us native a blur. plant related to the marigold family mm -hmm. with long, thin leaves that have jagged edges. Mm. This herb is made into a paste with some salt and citric acid as preservatives and is usually bought in jars. My God, I don't know who closed that. I think McKenzie is super strong. I don't know who's written this, but ah. at, the end, at, at the end of that it says, it came into my life. It's an accident. Oof. Do you want to try and open that? See yeah. if he's stronger than me. Watch See this. if I open this just really easily. This is going to this is going to annoy you, isn't it? Don't oh, you really? Ready? No, come on. Here we go. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Lebo. Hang on, we'll bring if in the strong man, please. Lebo. It's either or it's Mackenzie. He's done it. Aha! I slackened it for you, of course. <laughs> <laughs> now let's have yes. a look. I'm going to give it just a smell, not you, yeah, old, old factory. Uh, that's a good idea. Oh, it's strange. It's slightly minty, yeah. It took, it took a lot to get any mint, but I get that. It's a little bit of fresh mint. I mean, it's a strange, strange look about it. I wanted it to do that great physical comedy game that <laughs> Peter Sellers does in The Shot in the Dark where he smells the moisturizer. Yeah. <laughs> From the rest of the scene, he's just like, <laughs> Yes, I know that. Anyway, we'll get rid of that. Oh, I've not tasted it really. You right. smelt it. I'll put that there. I'm going right. to do a little bit more uh, reading here. Of okay. The black hair. I'm going to get a potato in it. The sauce is prepared with hukatai, which is it? why it's called hukatai, mm -hmm. a leafy green herb native to the Andes Mountains, which is found growing wild in many fields and small farms. It is not formally 
cultivated because it is self-propagating ah. and used by the locals in their condiments. Mm -hmm. It is similar to the, I hope I get this right, peyoco, pe, peyoso. Paiko. Peyo, paiko. Or, or epazote plant, which is used in sopa de paiko or paiko soup. So it's similar to paiko and uh, it's a, uh, it's, um, it's a mint. Yes. It comes from the marigold family. And it's self-propagating, which means it, you know, it, it seeds itself. So the plant will create little seeds that will fall off and then create more plants. So it doesn't need to be farmed because it does its own thing. I get the feeling because that Because this... I suppose there was a time when there was no farms. Well, there definitely, you know, well, there definitely all, was. All plants are self-propagating, are they not? Sure, actually. Well, otherwise they wouldn't be here. Yeah, it's a good point, actually. Thank I'm, you. Do you get the feeling that this is going to be revolting? I don't know, but I'm going to have this whole potato with All it. All right, let's give it a try. I've, yeah. I've put a lot on that it. That is a lot. Are you looks not putting like, a lot on it? Would it be fair to say it looks like dog dirt? It totally looks like, you know, if my dog, Bobby Johnson, has eaten too much protein yeah. and not enough carbs, Yeah. that is totally what his poo looks like. Yeah, it looks And I would not put that in a potato. No, it looks like the runs. You ready? Here we go. First impressions? Well, I enjoy a boiled potato drum, as you know. So I have to get through... The potato taste. Yeah, because I enjoy a boiled potato, as I say. I was recently in Ireland, and uh, the cliche that they eat potatoes is completely founded because every <laughs> single lunchtime, it was just thousands of potatoes to eat. Did you never have rice? Yeah, we did have a little bit of rice, but it's generally potatoes. There would be a, like a mini revolt at work if there wasn't the option of potatoes. Now, what do you think? It's all right, isn't it's it? It's like, um, it's definitely mint. There's a lot of mint. Yeah, there's mint in But there. there's something else. Well, like hooker tie. Is, <laughs> is it the hooker tie you're getting? You're getting a hint of hooker tie? There's, so, there's like um, an he, earthiness. Yeah, like a hue of hooker tie. You know, like mint is very sort of fresh, and I would say in a sort of airy way. This feels very earthy. No, it is earthy. I think that's a good description. I don't... I would say it's unpleasant. Ooh. Now, the people who like mastication are having a great time right now, and the people who don't Because what I was your guts. What I was doing there is I had no potato with it because the potato was making me enjoy it too much. So I'm taking it as it is and then forcing it against the top you oh. managed to stain your teeth quite a lot with it. I'm, but I'm forcing it against the top of my mouth, if you will, the roof. Do it, do it again to get and the then, real taste. And then it's squirting, like, in between my, my, my back teeth and my gums. I've tried it on its own and it's not got any better. Look. That's disgusting. Because it? then it's right back in my palate there, Dom. Which I, th I guess is where my, my taste buds are. I thought your taste buds were all over your tongue. Are they? Well, I thought so. Right, hold there on. You, go. you do your thing. I'm going to read this. In Peru and other Latin American countries. Now, can I just say to any of any of uh, people, any of the people listening from Peru, mm -hmm. uh, hello or hola. Oh, well done, Tom. Uh, Peru is one of my favorite countries in the world. I've been there probably eight times and I just absolutely love it. I've never been, Dom. Especially the city of Iquitos. So, hello to everyone who lives in Iquitos if you're there. Uh, it says here, in Peru and other Latin American countries, the hookah thai leaves are crushed using a fulling mill stone tool that serves as a traditional blender. This grinds the leaves more coarsely than a modern blender might, but allows greater absorption of flavor. The sauce is easy to prepare Oh, goodness. It typically takes 15 to 30 minutes to make. It is traditionally used in the preparation of chicken parties. I love, eh? I love the idea of a chicken a party. A chicken party? Now, is that a party for chickens or a party where you eat chickens? Hopefully for chickens. For chickens. Or barbecues. But many households prepare it on a regular basis. Traditional ingredients. Oil. Queso fresco. Fresh what? cheese. Right. Chilies. Of a chili. I'd love some love chilies. Chili and I, I, have a look at that and tell me if there's chilies in that, would yeah. you, Tom? Garlic, cilantro. Otherwise known as? Um, uh, hold on, don't tell me. No, uh, I won't, I won't. Um, I won't cilantro. Cilantro, is, cilantro, come on. Hold on. 
We went to a wedding where they wouldn't allow cilantro, do you remember? The, the, the groom. We? Yeah, we, we, we were the witnesses at a wedding and the groom oh, was yeah. violently oh, opposed that's to right. cilantro. Yeah. You still don't know, do you? No, I do. Oh, do you want me to say the name? Say it. Uh, Andrew Jack. Yeah. And the name of cilantro. Oh, right. <laughs> Um, uh, the cilantro, the, because over over in America they don't they call it cilantro, but they call the seed is. Uh, I always know when Billy's gonna get something and when he's not gonna get it, and he's not gonna get. I'm not gonna get it. Oh, right, hold on then, because it's not cardamom. No, well, you're a, in the right ballpark. It's though. a seed. They call it a seed here, right. but we call the leaf. Ah, ah. <laughs> you put it in uh, curries. Yes, it's coriander. Right. Right. Oh, this is the correct. You've done it. You've done it. Hey, I was surprised by that. Coriander. Scallions, which is a tiny little onion. <laughs> <laughs> is it written? Is it, does a scallion become an onion? No, I don't think so. I think it's something I think else. A scallion is always, it's always like a dwarfed onion. Ah, right? So okay. I don't think it's ever going to become a big one. Because you get like red onions and pearl onions and they get much bigger. Yeah. But scallions are always small. And so every single one of these ingredients I love. Oil, <laughs> great. Fresh cheese, love. Chilies, love. Garlic, love. Cilantro or coriander, love. Scallions love, salt love. I don't love this. Okay, Tom. I think it's all right, but I don't. Do you love it? No. Do you like it? I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I want to try what? it in pasta now. I don't want to try it in pasta. Would I, you heat it up for pasta? I don't think it goes well necessarily. I mean, I could see it on a bit of fish. Whose idea was this? Did I, someone send it in? I thought it came from Johnny Clues. Hey, and then he's Johnny not around. Clues. Today. Yeah, who knows? I don't think this is something Mackenzie would give us. If you if you look over at the window there, Mackenzie's yeah. actually laughing. Not with us, but at us. Mac Mackenzie think, Grammar. What's up, Mackenzie? I think Mackenzie finds it disgusting and she wants to see if we found it disgusting. I think she's tried it, hasn't she? And she didn't like didn't it. Like it. But it's all right. It's quite a quite a dominant salt taste. Should we give it some scores? Uh first off, I'm going to do you a quiz. Go on. Right. There's well, forty five. Uh, servings. Okay. 45 servings in that, right? Yeah. You so divide that 45. by 45. Easy. Don't How many calories done. in a serving? How many calories in a 45 widths of that? Yeah. I don't think a lot because is, is there any sugar? No. So it's all that. Um, two. But hang on. Really? Let's see. Brilliant! That's fantastic! It's really too You good. win the jar. I'd like that, actually. Right. Right, let's give it some scores. Right, go on then. Flavour. Flavour. give it another go on its own for flavour. Flavour out not of terrible. 10. I mean, Dom, I'm going to have to just give it a three. It's a very dominating kind of, like you said. Four. Earth, Four. <laughs> earthy, swampy, almost marsh-like. Yeah, but salty as well. Salty. I like the salty. I like the salt. I like the salt. I like the marsh. Is it like is it like seaweed that's gone bad or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's like unfortunately, like an old man, you've got it like on the side. I mean, it's earthy, it's earthy. No, it feels like you're eating the ground. You've given it a four. But I don't know if it needs. I'll the be minute. kinder because I I love Peru. I'll give it a five. Five, not bad. And what about aesthetics? Oh God, I mean, it looks like dog dirt. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not the jar's all right. It shows you the the leaf that it's made from. I like that it's. You know, there's a lot of leafy, vegetable yeah. type, herby things in there. What do you think? But it does. I mean, look at that. It just looks like poo, doesn't it, Dom? It does a little bit. Uh, yeah. Aesthetics. I'll be kind. I'll give it a one. That's kind. That's kind? Well, I'm going to say because it's got this sort of leafiness and that sort of rough, as you said, it, it's, it's, it, you know, the way that it's been blended. Uh, course, yeah. It's coarse. I quite like that. So I'm going to give it a... 6.2. Oh, no. wow, that's quite good. Usefulness. Usefulness. Well, it says you, you put, usually put it on chicken. You, it says you, you have it in pasta. I don't see how it works in barbecue? pasta. Barbecue? I wouldn't put barbecue. it in a barbecue, would oh, you? Yeah. Pasta? I don't even think... It... A, min, a minty, salty pasta. I can't see how that would work. How would really. it? Well, um, I mean, as a dip with, like, tortillas, would it work like that? I've got, I've got some tubs in the house, Dom, that just sit there. And then every couple of years they'll get thrown in the bin. You mean and dips I, that you don't like? Just just things that I've bought. Yeah. You know, you thought, oh, I'll use that. Yeah. I think that hookatai could well end up like that. Yeah. 
sat in the very back of the fridge and you think, well, it's not going to go bad, so I'll just keep it. But then you think, well, uh, what would you ever use it for? And it's like 18 years later and you think, can I still use that? Mm. You probably couldn't. Mm. You shouldn't. Well, for the Peruvian people, it might be much more useful. But for me personally, from a mm. useful point of view, I'm going to say, I'll give it a four. I'm going to give it a 3.5, Dom. It's not done very well. Has it's it? not. Hukatai has not done well in the Friendship Onion. That's it for Billy and Dom Eat the World. Please send in your suggestions. And even though the Hukatai uh, black mint paste didn't necessarily get the best scores, this is one of our favorite ones to do, something we've never heard of before. That's right. It's a bit peculiar. Mm -hmm. We'll be brave. We'll try our best. So send in your suggestions to us at speakpipe forward slash The Friendship Onion. Or you can send an email to The Friendship Onion at castmedia.com. Guys, that's it. What? That? Dom, I really Bye. enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Bye. We're we leaving you. Skilly bye. Goodbye. We Wish you a good night. Goodbye. Sorry, I was just messing around there. We have to say bye, don't we? We do, but we talked about a lot today Woo! and I enjoyed it. You were absolutely wonderful company. I felt the same way. If I was giving you a score today, it's a classic 10 out of 10. I can't wait for next week. And next week, we have a fantastic guest. I won't tell you who it is. Oh, a guest? Oh, yes. Brilliant. And just to remind you guys, if you're buying merchandise from us at the Friendship Onion Podcast, Dot com. We very much appreciate it. But if you want to buy specific Christmas gifts, go have a look because there's some festive wear there. And who knows, in the next couple of weeks, we might be wearing some of those festive things too. I want a pair of those socks. I can't wait, Dom. We should socks. make a scarf. I enjoy a scarf. Yeah, let's do it. All right, you guys. We'll see you next week. See you next time. Bye-bye.